Recently, I was hiking in a remote canyon of the American Southwest. I had been flying my drone, getting scenic shots of the area. All of a sudden, I spotted something. I flew in closer. I could tell quickly it was an ancient cliff dwelling. Then I realized there were two. I was immediately confused. There seemed to be zero access points to these ancient structures. But somehow people had gotten there, even lived there in the past. But how? What I found was mind boggling. Hey everybody, it's Andrew from Desert Drifter. Thanks for tuning in. So we need to make some moves because the shadows are starting to grow long and we gotta go see what this thing is. I've been out here most of the day and starting to think, okay, I should probably head back pretty soon. And then we saw these things. It definitely looks pretty wild. But I've also had a lot of instances, whether it was looking at it from a drone or just my own eyes, but from a distance, you know, looking at something and either thinking, wow, that looks really hard. And then you get up close and you know, it's really not, or vice versa, where sometimes you underestimate things and it turns out to be a lot harder. So I don't know what this is gonna turn out, but we're gonna find out. I've got to contour around this bend and get out into the sun again. And it looks like they're kind of out on a corner of the canyon. Okay, so I believe it was somewhere over on this canyon wall. Just gotta find a way through the brush here. Okay, so here they are. The sun is like right on them, so it might be hard for you guys to make out, but I'll get up closer. Gosh, initial look is like, what the heck? So just to the left, the plot thickens. So look up in this shaded spot. I just saw those. I think we got enough time. Let's go look at them real quick bit of a conundrum with the time, but I think if I hustle, we can hit both spots. So let's try it real quick. Okay, so here's the approach to the little side ruin off of the main two. So this little window is what caught my attention. It's probably about 12 feet off the ground, just a sheer face, but it kind of continues over there. So let's go See if there's a way up back there. There's a little structure in the back here that's fallen down, but the main thing is just right up this little slab. It's not bad at all. So first thing that really sticks out to me are all these portholes. So quick count gives me one, two, three, four. I see 10, 10 different portholes. And they all seem like they're facing a, a different direction so that you can have like an overall commanding view of the field before you. But it's just kind of like a rubble filled slope below you. Let me try to give you guys a quick rundown. So right, Back here is where I came up, just a little ledge. The wall begins here, but I would guess that at one point it carried on further and it's just fallen down. And then once you get into the wall is where you start getting all of the portholes. Wow, that's actually really intriguing. So this one faces right down the ledge that you have to walk up to get here. It also looks out, so that first little door of the granary was like, it's like right here, maybe 12 feet away from me. And so you'd also be able to see any approach to that. So you got the end of this wall, and then there's another doorway here, and this would eventually lead you into that second granary but this one's fully closed up. There's no, you know, portholes in there, 
which makes me think that was just purely a storage spot. It's an intriguing spot for sure with um, with all these like portholes. You know, I've seen that a few different places here in the Southwest. Um, and sometimes people say like, oh, well, that must be like gun holes and stuff. These ruins here, I mean, this thing's at least 800 years old. Um, so it was long before firearms ever came uh, into the Americas. So my guess for these is they're not like firing holes because you couldn't get a bow and arrow, you know, lined up and shot out of that, I don't think. I think it was more just to, to spot. It's definitely intriguing, but I want to make sure we have plenty of time to check those others out. <laughs> wow. They're up on top of that thing. There's one, and there's the other. My first impression is, what the heck? But I also haven't gone over here yet, so let's go look at that. Here's another angle. We're definitely starting to lose daylight, so I don't want to speculate too much. I just want to see if it's possible gosh i don't know see if it's possible to get up there so below the ruin i'm starting to see a number of just pieces of broken pottery old broken stone tools as well oh, wow definitely a big piece concealed by the sagebrush wow look at that design that's a big, that's a much thicker chunk than most pottery I've seen. Huh. Here's another big chunk next to it. Always leave this stuff where you find it. So although I love looking for a piece of pottery and stuff, let's get to business. Okay, I think the sun's gonna give us one last hurrah. So I'm gonna drop the pack. If you guys watch the channel normally, <laughs> you know how it goes. Um, I think I'm just gonna bring my little action camera. So there's definitely access to this first ledge up here. Beyond that, I don't know. There's the ledge. It's getting pretty thin. Take a look at that. There's an old wall here. I would imagine it was maybe to block block this or at least just make it harder, make it narrower, force you out on the edge more. I have to crawl under this section here. Okay. So those boulders, you know, I wouldn't want to put weight on them. I don't know how, I don't know how sturdy they are. So this one that I'm on, I'm hesitant to put too much weight on it, but it makes it quite awkward. I think I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm going to have to put a little weight anyways on it. Is, uh... Wow, this is getting kind of nuts. Okay. 
okay a little wider here so there was definitely some old wall right here what it was for I don't know huh there's one of them what do we have up here so so I'm probably Mm, 40 plus feet off the ground at this point. Hmm. This is the crux here. You guys hear how hollow that chunk is out here? And this is this is broken off at some point. Ooh. Yeah, that's sketchy. It is so crumbly out here. It's just like hollow. Look at that, I can break this rock. Man, there's no way that's... I mean, you'd have to be... like... incredibly tiny. I don't think... I don't know that anybody truthfully could really do that. So... Yeah, you got to step down onto that ledge and then walk up there. Almost looks like down there, this little walkway is hollow. Like it's like a floating arch almost. Huh. I don't know. I don't know, guys, I don't like it. Um, I think I'm going to bail. It was super awkward up there. I want to get the drone up because one, I want to take a look at it. But when I was up there, I looked, I could kind of like look around the corner and I was like, I think the ledge ends, but yet there's another ruin over there. So we got to take a closer look. As you guys can see, sun is setting. It's beautiful. Um, I'm just going to hike back in the dark. <laughs> that's, that's the moral of the story because we got to take a closer look at this. Okay, so I probably just flew the drone for like 20 minutes trying to get every angle, every possible approach. Um, let's go take a closer look down here. What I saw, it's, it's crazy. Like I, I, don't, I don't really have words for it. Okay, so this is the bottom view of where I bailed. I bailed right, like right there. And I don't know how well that camera picked it up, but the rock was like super hollow up there. It was like just crumbly. Yeah, I mean, most likely it's gonna hold. Um, I've had friends that have had some really close calls um, with just stepping on a rock at the wrong time and just, if my life depended on it and I had to get across it, yeah, I would totally do it. You know, on the spice factor, like, I don't know, maybe it's like a three out of five, like it's a little heady, but you know, that, Honestly, so I should probably clarify. So getting... Okay, let's let a more sane and collected desert drifter break this down. Because what I found out there deserves further explanation. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the ramp I scrambled up to gain access to the ledge. Along the ledge, you'll see the first small wall here. And then beyond the sketchy balanced boulders, the remnants of the second wall I came across. Next, I crawled to where the really hollow rock was. As I assessed it, I could see that the ledge became unsupported. I estimated this section was only about five feet thick. Not exactly confidence inspiring. The move to get down onto this ledge and then up to the ruin looked challenging. And if you messed it up, you were likely falling to your death. But overall, it was doable for someone with climbing experience. I would have considered it, but the quality of the sandstone made my decision easier. I didn't trust it to hold my weight. However, if my alternative was to risk capture, death, or cannibalization at the hands of my enemies below, I would have definitely taken the chance. That might have been the situation for the people who originally built this. So let's take a closer look at this specific ruin. It's not the one that blew me away. That's the second one. 
but we'll get to that shortly. This first rune had a clear way to it, even if difficult. It's not a dramatic departure from what I've seen in the past. Sure, it's dangerous to get to. Sure, it's impossible to imagine living on a ledge like this. But once you've spent time in the southwest, you understand that these defensive cliff dwellings are common from about eight to 900 years ago. It appears very desperate things were going on. As I flew the drone around the structure, I was intrigued to find faint rock art next to it. What it means, who lived here, and why are questions we can only speculate about. Okay, so I'm at the base of the second pillar because these are basically like built on pillars. So the, the one ruin that I almost got to is right there. And then I had thought, okay, well that ledge probably, you know, continues on to this one. But I mean, look up there, guys. There is nothing that's, that's completely sheer face, rock face. Okay, so I'm on the ledge here. Basically the last non-vertical section before the ruin up there. So I came even further down on the ledge just to see if this was at all possible. But no, that's totally vertical. Huh, not that it solves the mystery, but there's a really pretty piece of pottery down here right below look that's where that was follow it up Whew, 50 feet up there the ruin sits right up on top of that pillar you know like if i was to grade this on the yosemite decibel system which is how um, climbing routes are graded and you can you can google that and look look that up if you want i mean I don't know, 5'11 trad? Like it's, it's serious. Honestly, I said 5'11 and I'm like looking closer. 5'12, I, I don't know, hard, like elite hard, particularly with no rope, like insane, really. I mean, what I'm seeing here is like, yeah, <laughs> to gauge, I want, so, I mean, what I'm seeing here is like another level. Like it's, it's not even to say, that's not even a good way of saying it. I really want to look at that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let me interject here. Clearly, I was flustered by what my brain was trying to comprehend out there. Let me try and break this down for you, because I know camera angles only do so much. Basically, this ancient construction appears to be a superhuman feat, and that's what I'm prone to believe. But we're going to examine every possible explanation. My drone tells me it's height off the ground, and when it was flying near the ruin, it said it was about 55 feet up. It's surrounded on both sides by sheer walls. Let's address some common explanations people will suggest. The first theory is the use of ladders. If this was a 10 to 20 foot climb, I'd be prone to believe this. But we're talking almost 60 feet here. Even with all of our modern metals, I don't think you can buy a freestanding ladder that would reach that high today. You need a bucket or a fire truck. Not to mention, you're not just going to pull up a 60 foot wooden ladder after you. All your enemy has to do is pull it down or set fire to it and you'll die a slow death on your ledge. Second option, the ground level used to be higher up, but due to soil erosion is lower now. It's true this happens, but the most dramatic example of this I've seen was only about 15 to 20 feet max. 
I'm not buying 60 feet of soil erosion here in 800 years, not even close. The third option, the only one I see as remotely plausible, is significant rockfall. Perhaps the ledge that vanishes into thin air used to run all the way to this second ruin. Let's examine that. When rock falls out here in the desert, it takes millennia to erode. So if there was significant rockfall, I would suspect we could look below this ruin and see the massive sandstone blocks that once formed this ledge. It's just not there. Sure, there are fallen rocks below, but this is canyon country. There's fallen rocks of this size everywhere. There are no massive blocks in sight that would be left from a rockfall event of this size. Because of this, I have to conclude that rockfall has not significantly altered this area since the time of the buildings. For anyone wondering if there was a way in from the top or the left side, I can assure you there's not. I looked closely. They are completely sheer and overhung. So after all my observation, I had to conclude that these ancient people performed an elite climbing and construction feat. Exactly why and exactly how are mysteries. Of course there are theories. I do believe they used ropes and possibly jammed logs into these crack systems to help their ascent. But even with that, the danger of what they did here is still extreme. Why take these risks? Perhaps a massive drought during this time led to a breakdown of the social and political fabric of this culture. Desperate times may have led to some very desperate actions. But ultimately, to me, this is a story of human ingenuity and adaptability. These structures stand as a testament to these people's lives and hard work. We may never have all the answers we want, or agree upon the various theories, but I hope we can honor those who have gone before us and remember that we are on the same journey that they were. All right, guys, it's, it's pretty much dark. I'm just sitting here just you know, mind blown. Uh, I'm going to force myself to start walking back. Man, it was uh, <laughs> unexpected to say the least. I'm glad you guys joined me. Um, hit subscribe if you want to keep exploring the Southwest with me. I'll catch you guys next time.